Hello and welcome to another edition of Gear Grotto. In this episode I'll be looking at the full version of the TDR Kotelnikov named the Gentleman's Edition. There's also a free but reduced version. It's named after Vladimir Kotelnikov, a Russian scientist who independently discovered the sampling theorem. I'm also going to talk about basic and advanced compressor features in general, so even if you don't have the Kotelnikov yet, stay tuned. The Kotelnikov is a mastering or mix bus compressor, although you can use it on individual channels as well. It's program dependent, meaning it can vary its response depending on the frequency content or amplitude of the input signal. The Kotelnikov lets you tweak these dependencies and adds new features as well. It doesn't have fancy graphics and emulated sound, instead it's all about high fidelity and flexibility. Input signal above the threshold will initiate compression. In the Kotelnikov, the threshold knob is referenced to the RMS level, not the peak level. I'll come back to this later in this video. Ratio controls how hard the signal should be compressed. The Kotelnikov devotes half of the knob to ratios below 2 to 1, ideal for mastering. The knee determines the curve between threshold and ratio. A hard knee is practical when you want very specific levels to trigger the compressor at exactly the given ratio. A soft knee creates a transitional area in the threshold by gradually introducing the ratio. This leads to smoother compression, especially with complex signals. A soft knee also triggers compression at lower levels than the nominal threshold indicates. That's because the knee modifies the threshold area as well as the ratio. You may need to tweak your threshold setting slightly after introducing a soft knee. The attack is the speed at which the output signal should be reduced in level. The Kotelnikov goes from an extremely fast 2 microseconds to a leisurely 250 milliseconds. The attack refers to the peak path, while the RMS attack is relatively slower. The release is the speed at which the compressed signal should be returned again. There are two release knobs in the Kotelnikov, which I'll explain later. But first I'd like to clarify something. It's a popular misconception that the attack and release values specify time periods. In reality, they control the speed. Milliseconds are used at the design stage to measure how quickly gain changes while aiming for say 10 dB or 80% of a desired gain reduction. But since no industry standard exists for this amount, seemingly identical speeds can vary greatly between compressors. For this reason, many compressors use nondescript values from 1 to 10, 1 to 20 or perhaps 1 to 100. If a compressor uses milliseconds, it's still just a reference to the speed, not a time period. Another popular misconception is the notion of distinct attack and release phases. But unless the compressor has an actual hold function, it's constantly modulating the signal during compression. That's why you can get intermodulation distortion even with a signal that appears to show steady gain reduction. The takeaway here is to think of attack and release as a game of tug of war, always pulling the signal towards the desired goal, never holding still. Now on to the more specialized functions. First is the gain reduction limit, also known as range. Without it, a compressor will compress as many decibels as determined by the settings and the input signal with no restrictions. The GR limit lets you manually restrict the maximum gain reduction. This is convenient when you've found the right threshold and ratio for most of the track, but a few places trigger too much compression. Set the GR limit and you get to keep your settings and ignore additional reduction. Furthermore, you can use creative or extreme settings while still having control over the maximum amount of gain reduction. 
the Peak Crest lets you choose between or blend peak and RMS detection. With peak detection, any peaks and dips are detected immediately. This allows the compressor to potentially react quickly to changes in the input signal. With RMS detection, the input signal is averaged out for a smoother reaction. The Kotelnikov avoids the tendency of regular RMS design to overreact on base heavy material. It also applies a subtle auto hold function to avoid noise buildup or breathing artifacts during sudden low level sections. When blended, the two paths run in parallel, the peak path mainly controlling transient and high level material, while the RMS path takes over during slower and more steady parts. With a crest setting of zero, both paths have equal thresholds. However, by default the peak threshold is set 3 dB higher. That's because of a naturally occurring relationship in sine waves, where the peak level of a sine wave is roughly 3 dB higher than its RMS level. This serves as a good starting point for balance detection and clean sound. Raising the peak crest higher than 3 dB means that peaks contribute less and less, eventually resulting in pure RMS detection. Going in the opposite direction, towards zero or below the RMS threshold, can be used for creative shaping, pumping or harmonic distortion. As mentioned earlier, you can adjust the speed of each release path individually. The handy LEDs indicate which path is in use. Dual paths open up to a wider range of usable speeds. And thanks to its program-dependent nature, that includes very quick RMS release speeds. In most cases, you'll want to keep the peak release quicker than the RMS release, or in effect, you will disable the RMS path. If you're dealing with clean tonal sub-frequencies that need to stay very clean, going above 150 milliseconds of RMS release will keep the harmonics in check. Inertia is a non-linear speed mode, inspired by opto compression or the variable release in the Crane Song STC-8 mastering compressor. Inertia slows down during low gain reduction and speeds up with high gain reduction. This is practical when you don't want to pull up tails and low level material. You can use this for mastering, on a drum bus, for stealthy parallel compression, or for shaping a punchy bass track in order to accentuate the attack but keep the flappy tail from pulling up. Option clicking inertia activates inverted inertia. Inverted inertia is inspired by the electro mode in the classic Waves Renaissance compressor. This mode does the opposite. It speeds up during low level compression and slows down with high gain reduction. This is effective in pulling up low level material. Again, the GR limit is blanked out, but this time replaced with a ratio dependent range. You can use inverted inertia to fake upward compression, using radical settings to pull up low-level material with only few side effects to the peaks. This technique is often used as part of a serial compression chain in mixing. You can also use it as an alternative to gentle parallel compression and mastering, or as an alternative to true upward compression. You can find a download link for some presets I've made in the video description below. The low frequency relaxation reduces the low end in the sidechain. First, let me explain that the sidechain is the part of the compressor that detects the input signal. Based on your settings, a control signal is then sent to the gain cell or amplifier, turning the signal down or back up. As you can see, the sidechain is an integrated part of the compressor. External sidechain compression, on the other hand, is when you substitute the internal input signal with an external one. External sidechain compression is used to achieve a rhythmic docking effect or to create space or headroom between different tracks in a mix. These concepts are often confused because of lazy terminology. So, filtering out low end in the sidechain simply means less low end goes into the threshold, but the output signal is not filtered. The Kotelnikov's default roll-off is closer to how our brain perceives linear frequency weighting than an actual flat setting. 
A bit of filtering will also help reduce pumping caused by the low end. Many mastering compressors opt for a slightly steeper slope with settings in the 50 to 150 Hz range. While filtering the sidechain essentially results in a frequency-dependent threshold, FDR in contrast is a frequency-dependent ratio. One of the main differences is that FDR is proportional. In other words, a high FDR amount alone is not very audible, but the higher the nominal ratio and amount of gain reduction, the more audible FDR becomes. The closest thing to FDR I have in my rack is the fat and air functionality on the Dave Hill Titan compressors. I've sometimes wished that I could engage both fat and air at the same time, and something similar is actually possible using the inverted equal loudness curve in the Kotelnikov. Compressors introduce so-called odd order harmonics during compression. Check out my video on the Black Box HD2 tube saturator for more on this subject. The STC-8, however, has the rare option of shifting from purely odd order to even order harmonics using the key and Hara switch. Inspired by this, the Kotelnikov has a yin and yang button. Both add even order harmonics, with yin triggered by low and low mid frequencies, and yang triggered by the mids and highs. You can either use yin and yang to mask odd order distortion, or you can use them as coloration options that for a lack of a better description, warm up or excite the sound. In the self-professed, proudly digital compressor, I'm getting a lot of analog vibe from this feature. Since the added harmonics are proportional to the speed and amount of compression, yin and yang are mainly audible with fast compression. I found the yang function great at compensating for perceived high-frequency dulling from peak compression, especially on overtone-sensitive material like vocals and some types of mixes. In most DAWs, you'll automatically process in stereo or mono, but you can force the Kotelnikov to work with a specific target. Some indifference can be used alone, or more commonly in a mid-side setup using two Kotelnikovs. Dual mono is rarely appropriate in mastering, since the stereo image can fluctuate violently, but it's possible with two instances, or if your DAW features dual mono inserts. Stereo sensitivity gives you variable control over the stereo detection in the sidechain. With difference set to 100%, the compressor follows the stereo channel with the highest amplitude. This upholds the relative balance of the stereo image, but it also means that the loudest channel can cause minor cross-modulation in the opposite channel. A good tip is to lower the difference setting if you feel that prominent stereo sounds such as stereo synthesizers or hard pan guitar dubs over trigger compression. Think of it as a relaxation of the compressor's response to stereo material. When difference is set all the way to 0%, centered or mono signals like drums, bass and lead vocals trigger the most compression, while wider signals trigger less or no compression. A side effect is the potential widening of the stereo image, since wide signals no longer trigger as much compression. However, it can sound unnatural when overdone, since the compressor no longer reacts to what we actually hear in the original input signal. The Kotelnikov uses oversampling to reduce aliasing and improve intersample precision. It's still bit transparent when no gain reduction takes place. You can adjust the quality of processing in order to affect the CPU load. The Insane mode is extremely clean and the choice for stereo or stem mastering. The Precise mode is also very clean and suitable for high quality mixing duties. In most cases, there is no audible difference between the Precise and Insane mode. The Eco mode is only relevant if you're really pressed for power. There's also a Live mode, which makes several other compromises in exchange for very low latency. Let's move on to the last section of the compressor. You can use makeup gain to compensate for the level reduction due to compression. However, the Kotelnikov Smart Equal Loudness Trim, which I'll explain in a moment, is likely a better choice in most cases. The Dry Mix knob enables you to do internal parallel compression. The Dry Mix knob adds the original uncompressed input signal on top of the compressed signal. 
If you need to fine-tune the balance, you can use a negative makeup gain to attenuate the processed signal. This is a subtle workflow thing, but I like this approach. If you prefer the old-school way, double-clicking the label switches to a traditional dry-wet knob that lets you blend between the two. The output gain controls the total output of the compressor. There is a smart loudness measurement that lets you trim the output by automatically comparing the loudness of the compressed signal to the uncompressed signal. Play a section of the track for 5 seconds and the red LED changes to green. Press Trim to apply the offset to the output gain. The LED now changes to blue, indicating an equal loudness match. Hover the cursor over the Trim button to see the current trim estimate. The LED color and estimate change throughout the song, so make sure you choose a representative 5 second section of the track on which to perform the measurement. Using the same loudness measurement, the Bypass button lets you bypass any processing and seamlessly compare the signal with or without compression. This isn't a regular Bypass button, since the uncompressed signal will have its gain changed in order to compensate. Again, it isn't foolproof, but it'll get you in the ballpark. The Delta button lets you listen to the difference between the original and the compressed signal, in effect letting you eavesdrop on what the compressor is doing to the signal. If you're not quite sure what's affecting the signal when you're tweaking something, try using the Delta function. The Kotelnikov is one of the most flexible mastering compressors around. It doesn't emulate anything, and it doesn't replace anything in my rack, but it is an awesome digital compressor in its own right, and it's already a stable with many mastering engineers. It's the same flexibility that can make it slightly daunting to beginners. But hopefully this video will help. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the section below.